Control Surface Studio 2.6 brings a huge update to the Reactions mapping type. With Reactions, you now have the ability to use hundreds of Ableton Live events and actions via an easy to use menu system, as well as access to a more powerful and intuitive interface. You'll be building your own custom MIDI controller functionality for Ableton Live 9, 10 or 11 in no time, without the need to write a single line of code. I'm John from Remotify. In this video, I'm going to give you a complete overview of how reactions work. Plus, follow along as I use reactions to build some completely custom functionality for my own MIDI controller. To explain what the reactions mapping type is, let's compare it to other mapping types. Control Surface Studio already has many types of mappings for use in your Ableton scripts. Let's look at the tempo mapping type as an example. Although you can edit settings for it, such as the minimum and maximum BPM, or select the input on your MIDI controller to control it with, this mapping type only ever controls Ableton Live's tempo. Reactions, on the other hand, aren't constrained to a single parameter. They're completely open, giving you the ability to select any action in Ableton Live to control from your MIDI controller. Let's take a look at how they work. Reactions work by connecting events and actions together between Ableton Live and the connected MIDI controller. An event is when something happens, and an action is a function to perform. Let's say you want to do something simple, such as when you press a pad on the MIDI controller to start playback in Ableton. To do this, you would add a reaction in your script where the event is pad1 being pressed on your MIDI controller and the action is to start playback in Ableton Live. This is an action and event connection from the MIDI controller to Ableton Live. The Ableton action is performed in reaction to the MIDI controller event happening. What if you then wanted the LED on your pad to light up when the playback status changes in Ableton. To do this, you would add a second reaction. This time you would select the Ableton event, playback status has changed. And the action is to light up a pad's LED on the MIDI controller. This would be an Ableton to MIDI controller reaction. With these two reactions in place, you would have bidirectional functionality meaning functionality which works in both ways, from the MIDI controller to Ableton, and from Ableton to the MIDI controller. But you could go further than that. Instead of simply running an action after an event happens, you can set the action to run only if a certain condition is met. Let's say you now want the action light up pad 1 LED to only happen when playback is started in Ableton. You can add a condition which first checks that Ableton's playback is playing and only runs the action if playback is started. To visually show that playback is started on your MIDI controller, you could also set the pad's LED to display as green. To complement this, you could then add a third reaction which displays the LED red if playback stops in Ableton. To do this, you would again use the playback status changed as the Ableton event, and use the same action to light up the LED on pad 1. But this time, you would set the LED colour to red. And for this action to run, playback must be stopped. Next I'll build this into a working Ableton script, but first let's take a look at the reaction settings form in Control Surface Studio. The reaction settings form has two main sections, the listeners section and the action blocks section. The listeners section is where you select the event which the reaction will listen for. Note, you can select multiple events to listen for by clicking the Add Listeners button.
The action block section is where you add actions to run when the selected event happens in the listeners section. An action block contains three sections, loop, condition, and action. The actions section is where you select the action to run when a listener's event happens. You can add multiple actions by clicking the add action button. The conditions section is where you can add checks that must be met before the action is run, such as the condition I talked about earlier to check if playback is playing in Ableton. The loop section is used to loop through lists of items. You can use this to run actions for multiple tracks, scenes or devices at once. We will go into the loop section in another tutorial. Above and below the action block are buttons to add more action blocks. Now I'm going to build a script for my launchpad using only reactions. The script will be a working version of my example from earlier on, which will do the following. When pad 1 is pressed, playback will start. When playback starts in Ableton, it will light the pad green. When playback stops, the pad will be lit red. And pressing pad 2 will stop playback in Ableton. All of this combined gives us a nice set of bi-directional functionality. So let's get started. First I'll add a new script. In the controller template for the script I'll select the launchpad S, which is my connector controller. Then I'm going to add a mode. In this mode I'll add a reaction. In the listeners section for the reaction, I'm going to select pad one is pressed, which is in the MIDI control uh, category. In the action section of the action block, I'm going to select from the Live Object Model Song category, Start Playing. And then I'll install that into Ableton Live and load up Ableton Live. Now that I have it open, i uh, select Live, Preferences, and as this is a new script, I'm going to select it as the control surface. And then make sure Launchpad S is set for the Input and Output controller, and Track and Remote are on for the Input and Output. Now when I press the pad, you can see that playback started. I'll now add a second reaction which, when playback starts in Ableton, lights up the launch pad's pad 1 LED. I'll switch back over to Control Surface Studio and add a second reaction. In the listeners section for this reaction, the event will be in Ableton Live, the song category, is playing has changed. In the actions for this reaction, I'm going to select from the MIDI controller, send MIDI velocity value to input. And in the action parameters, for controller input, I'll select pad 1, and for the velocity value that we're going to send to the pad, I'll enter 127, which is an amber colour on the launch pad. And now I'll install that update 
into Ableton Live. Reload Live. Now when I press the pad, playback starts and the pad lights up amber. So we now have bi-directional functionality. I now have LED feedback on the pad, which is great, but it would be much better if I could see if playback has started or stopped directly on the pad, rather than needing to look at my computer screen. So I'll now set the LED to display red if playback has stopped, and green if playback has started. I'll go back to Control Surface Studio now. In the second reaction, I'm going to rename it to LED feedback just so we know which reaction is which I'll add a second action block the action in this action block is going to light up the pad 1 LED red so I'll select from the MIDI controller category send MIDI velocity value to input again select pad 1 again And this time I need the velocity value to be red, which if I go over to the launch pad S controller template, you can see that the color assignment red full is seven. So I'll enter seven as the velocity value. I'll open up the condition for this action block. I'm going to select the is playing value. So we're going to check if is playing is false and only if it is false will the action be run which is to display the LED red. And if I go up to action block one and now add a condition in there which is also checking the value of is playing. But this time we'll make sure that it is true. So the action in here will only be run when it is playing as true. And we're going to change the LED color from amber to green, which is 52. Now that's in place, we can install it into Ableton Live. Hop over to Ableton and reload the session so we get the updates. And now when I press the pad, it starts playback and the LED displays green. And when I stop playback, you can see that the LED displays red. Currently we have a start playback button, but we don't have a stop playback button, so I'll add that now. I'll rename reaction one to start playback so we know which is which and then I'll add a new reaction and name this stop playback for the listener it's just going to be the pad 2 was pressed MIDI controller event In the action, I'll just need to select from the live object model category, the song category, stop playback. And now I'll Install this update into Ableton and reload the session. And now I can start and stop playback. And I also have the green and red LEDs so I know what the status of the playback is. One last issue with the script at the moment is 
if I reload my Ableton session, you can see that there's no LED displayed until I start playback. So if I want an LED to display as soon as the script loads, I just need to add the event into the reaction. So I'll hop over to my LED feedback reaction and add a second listener. And this listener will be the script is initialized event, which is in the script category. I just need to install this. Nothing else needs to change. Just install this update into Ableton. Reload the session. And you can see that the red LED immediately displayed. So now I have a script where when playback starts and stops, the pad one LED will display green or red, depending on the status. And I can also start and stop playback from two pads on my controller. That's it for our overview of reactions. We hope it's helped you to understand this powerful mapping type and how it can help you to create your own ideal Ableton and MIDI controller integration. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on more tutorials where we will be going deeper into using reactions.